Well, hello everyone. For the 50th time, welcome to the Charles Norman Show. This is our last show of the season, y'all. So today, we're going to take a look back at some of my favorite parts of the show. I'm going to use this episode as my own open reflection. Even though we will be reflecting throughout the show, we will still have some new things to talk about. As usual, we will have our sports segment of the show. I want to reflect on the 2014 NFL season. This was a very entertaining season. There was one phrase throughout the show on a sports segment that I said more than anything on any other segment, and that was be balanced. We're going to take a look back at all the times that I've said be balanced. To end the sports segment off, I'm going to give you guys my well, the rundown on the NFL's offseason schedule. We have hot topics today, y'all. We're going to take a look back at some old hot topics, and then we're going to look at some new hot topics. Um, This is going to be good, I must say. Finally, we'll end off our show with inspiration. Monday's inspiration came from Dr. Maya Angelou. We will only focus on this inspiration today because this is my favorite life lesson that we've had. And I'm also going to tell you about the future of this show. And for the 50th time, it's time to start the show. Here we go. Go. <clears throat> I must start off sports by saying congratulations to the men of the 2015 Hall of Fame, NFL Hall of Fame class, Junior Seau, Jerome Bed, Charles Helly, Tim Brown, Will Shields, Mike Tangerhoff, Ron Wolf, and Bill Polian have all been elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I could not be happier for Charles Helly. He should have been in the Hall of Fame a long time ago. Let's face it. How many players do you know have five Super Bowl rings? Not only five Super Bowl rings, but started in all five of those Super Bowl games. The answer to that question is one, and that is Charles Haley. I'm happy for Jerome Bettis, too. The bus was one of my favorite running backs when I was younger. Bill Polian also deserved to get into the Hall. I'm glad he did. He was the president of the Bills back in the early 90s when they went f- to four straight Super Bowls. Even though they didn't win any of those Super Bowls, they still made it. And that's an accomplishment, a very, very huge accomplishment in itself. Bill did win a Super Bowl in 2006 with the Colts. And once again, congratulations to the 2015 Hall of Fame inductees. I still do believe that Kurt Warner should have been inducted, but he could get in next year or wait. Maybe not. Next year, I will be at the Hall of Fame induction Induction when my favorite quarterback, Brett Favre, is inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. That's my boy. So I went back to our last 49 episodes of the show to see how many times I've yelled, be balanced. I was going to put together a montage of me saying it, but I realized I counted and I said it 107 times. I could have a full episode worth if I put a video montage of me just saying, be balanced together. People ask me why I always was so repetitive with this be balanced mambo jumbo. I'm always tell, I always tell them that being balanced is the best way to be in the offense on NFL. Also, not even just the NFL, we got to be balanced in life. So be balanced, y'all. And my final closing thoughts of the 2014 NFL season, this year was pretty good one. And a pretty bad one for the NFL. The league started off in turmoil with the different... Issues like domestic violence, child abuse, and drug abuse. The league did make changes to the rules to try and prevent th- these issues from coming back in the future. Roger Goodell had an awful year as commissioner, and I still do believe that Roger Goodell should be relieved of his duties. The games this year were very entertaining. This season started out bright for me as a diehard Eagles fan. We were winning in the beginning, then Nick got hurt, and Mark came in, and stuff hit the fan. The Eagles really let me down this year, like they always do. You all were here to see the emotional roller coaster that I went on this year, dealing with the Eagles. You all just don't know how many times I had to redo a show because I taped the show with so much rage. When I say I taped the show with rage, I mean there was an extreme amount of anger and profanity in those shows. A lot of the time, these rage shows were draining me so much that by the time I taped the good show, I would just be an emo- uh, emotionless person just sitting there talking to you guys like this. The Eagles definitely determined how well our show would go. I remember when they lost to the Cardinals. This is a true story. The most heartbreaking loss for me in the last five years. I almost ended the show right then and there. That was like week seven. 
I was talked to my advisor about switching majors. I was going to turn to an education major. I was so hurt after that game. More than anything this season, I learned how to be patient. The Eagles didn't do things I wanted them to do most of the time. And more often than not, if they would have done the things that I wanted them to do, they would have been successful. I would tell them one thing on Friday's show, and then they would do the opposite, and they would lose. It was completely frustrating. I thought this season was the worst officiated season in the NFL that I've seen in a long time. The officials were horrible. I must say that the NFL did end off the season in the best possible way, but one of the best Super Bowls in the last 10 years. I really enjoyed it. Now moving on to the offseason of the NFL. The NFL Scott Combine will take place in Indy at the end of this month. Check it out. For those of you who don't know who the, what the Scott Combine is, it's basically an audition for college football players to audition in front of NFL coaches and scouts. They're going to try to put their best foot forward in front of many NFL scouts competing in many different drills. These guys are the future in the NFL. Check it out. The new league year starts on March 10th. Teams can begin to sign free agents on March 10th. This is the first step on the path to Super Bowl 50. Finally, from April 30th to May 2nd, the NFL draft will take place in Chicago. I just hope and pray that the Eagles don't draft Marcus Mariota. Okay, that's it for sports, y'all. I probably will do shows covering the news from all three of those events. Now it's time for Hot Topics. So hot Topics. So, we have Hot Topics again, y'all. There is one certain Hot Topic that I wanted to reflect on. That Hot Topic is Bill Cosby. I caught some fire and backlash from some of the viewers on this show because they did not agree with me when I said that I thought Bill Cosby was guilty. Well, I'm not going to back down. And I still say that I believe that Bill Cosby is guilty. And he will probably, be, probably won't be proving that he's guilty because I think the statute of limitations. But I think he's guilty. And he did it. This morning, L.A. Clippers point guard Chris Paul is under fire for saying that an NBA official was not fit to officiate an NBA game. The problem with this is that the official that he is talking about is a woman. She is really qualified to do her job, but she did call four technical fouls in one quarter. I don't think he was being sexist. I talk a lot of crap on NFL officials, and it's not because they're a man or woman. It's because they suck. It's a shame that we can't say anything anymore without anyone well, somebody being heard about it. He never said that because she was a woman that she wasn't fit for the NBA. It was because to him, she was doing a horrible job officiating the game. I don't think it had anything to do with her being a woman. He has the right to say whatever he wants. If you don't like it, don't listen to him. Stop making things bigger than what they have to be. Okay, Whitney Houston and Bobby Brown's daughter, Bobby Christina, is still on life support in a coma after she was found unresponsive in a bathtub about a week ago. Now, there were reports that she was brain dead and that she was going to be taken off of life support. But her father, Bobby Brown, has said that that is untrue and that he will not take his baby off of life support because he believes that God will heal her. I love his faith, honestly, and I pray that God does heal her. An Atlanta barber named Frederick wanted to find a way to discipline his 12-year-old son, Rashawn, for his bad behavior. Frederick realized that, hey... I'm a barber. So, to embarrass his son, he gave him an old man haircut. Take a look at that. I bet you Rashawn, or Rashawn won't act up anytime soon. Good job, Dad. So, Kim Kardashian has posed nude again in another magazine. This is probably one of the most repeated headlines ever. This woman loves to be naked. Quite frankly, I think it's disrespectful to her husband and to her daughter. She's out there sharing all of her goodies with the world. Her husband is all about the money, so he probably agrees with it. They clearly aren't thinking about the baby. I mean, we see Kim Kardashian naked more than we see ourselves naked. Put some damn clothes on, please. The Grammy Awards will be on CBS on Sunday night. I can't wait. There is honestly only one reason why I want to watch the show, and that's because Beyonce is performing. God, I love that woman. Other than her, I really won't be paying attention to the show. I think the Grammys are a joke. And that's it for Hot Topics, y'all. We'll be back with Hot Topics in a couple of months. Move on to Inspiration when people... most important lessons I ever learned from you and I still am you know I think I know the lesson and then I'll walk into a situation and think that's that same lesson and that is when people show you 
who they are, believe them. Yes, absolutely. A person says to you, I'm selfish, or I'm mean, or I am unkind. Or I'm crazy. Or I'm cra Believe them. They know themselves much better than you do. Mm -hmm. But no, more often than not, those of us who don't trust life say, don't say a thing like that. Mm -hmm. You're not really crazy. You're not really unkind. You're not really mean. <laughs> and as soon as you say that, the person, pow! That you know. And shows you, I told you. Mm -hmm. I told you I was unkind. So now why are you angry? When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. When people show you who they are, believe them the first time. I said this three times consecutively because this is the most important life lesson that we will ever learn. If someone tells you that they are crazy or they rude, you better believe them. Why would you not believe a person telling you about him or her self? They believe they know themselves better than you ever will or do you do now. Trust me, they do know themselves better than you do. When we don't believe them, we end up hurt. And when we end up hurt by them for not believing them, that is our own fault. They warned us, and we proceeded with our caution. Don't put yourself into a position to be hurt. We can avoid being hurt by believing a person the first time they show you who they are. You're going to remember this. I promise you, you're going to remember this episode when this lesson crosses your life. A person will always reveal him or herself to you after a while of you knowing them. Take this lesson with you everywhere you go. I promise you, it will save you from a lot of pain. Every time this lesson comes up in my life, and it comes up a lot, I smile and say, there it is again. It really is the lesson that keeps on giving. Remember, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. That is your assignment up until next September. My purpose for having an inspiration segment on the show was to try to help us all live a better life. Now, I'm not the greatest teacher in the world, and I'm not perfect. I'm not talking to you all like I know everything. I still have a lot to learn, a whole lot to learn. Trust me, this inspiration segment has helped me more than it has helped anyone else. Every time I write the inspiration segment out on Sunday nights, I learn something new. Honestly, I use inspiration as my teacher to help me live my best life. Y'all have seen it. There have been times during while I was taping the show, I will be the inspiration segment in particular, and I'll have revelations or aha moments about the inspiration. A couple of times, I will learn the true meaning of the inspiration that we were learning about in the middle of the show while I was talking about it. This is a learning process for me too, y'all, and it's one that I have really enjoyed. I just hope that you all have learned as much, if not more, than I have during this, during our many inspiration segments that we've had. And okay, y'all, that's our show. 50 episodes are in the books. This was the gold episode. While the show is our finale, it is not the end. I'm actually working on the next chapter of the show, which will air throughout the spring and summer. My plan is to take all 20 of our inspirations and interview people on each of the topics. People who I think can help us dig deeper into those inspirations and weekly assignments. I believe that this will help me carry out this show's purpose in a bigger and better way and that is to help us all live a better life this will not be like the normal show I will not tape the show and release it in the same day I plan on taping all 20 shows before I release them then at the end of June we will have our fourth annual Charles Norman Words this year I will be doing the show instead of just giving the awards out through social media I cannot express how thankful I am for everyone who has viewed this show on a consistent basis. Sometimes we've had over 50 viewers, and more than often not, more than often we had under 15. But I am thankful for the consistent viewers to our show. As long as I have a consistent following, which I normally do, I don't even care if it's just one person, which we've never just had a show with one viewer. Usually it's about 15. You 15 people, as long as you guys are still here, I will continue to do it. As long as I know that I am helping someone out, with this show or making someone's day better with this show, I will continue to do it. Whether it is one person or 100 people, I will continue to do this show. I thank anyone who, everyone who has left me comments about the show. I welcome both the positive and negative comments. Each and every one of those comments has helped me grow, and I thank you all for that. I hope you all will continue to watch and view our show together. I mean, show 
Together, we can all make a difference. While I'm on break from actually taping the show, I will return to writing articles on the website. Stay connected with me, y'all. I won't say goodbye. I'll just say until we meet again. See you later, everybody.